Hi everybody, it's Todd Nock and I'm back with uh, a new two-part video series. Uh, thanks for your patience. I'm sorry it's been a while since I've uh, last posted a video. Uh, the New York Comic Con was very hectic, very busy, and really wore me out. By the time I got back I needed uh, another week to recover and then get back into uh, drawing my comics uh, and get caught up on my deadlines so that delayed me from uh, getting a new video put together. But we got a new one up going now and uh, we got the line art video here uh, for this, uh, this shot of Rogue. Rogue is one of my favorite X-Men characters. Started reading X-Men as a kid in the 1980s and so I'm kind of doing a 1980s era Rogue here. Kind of her some people call it her kind of new wave sort of a uh, costume and uh, uh, kind of design. Her 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 hairstyle, I guess, is kind of along those lines. A little bit of a little bit of a faux hawk, a little bit of a, a mullet. So, uh, but she's uh, one of the was one of the first designs of Rogue I first encountered as a kid. So it's the one that uh, it's one of her many looks that that appeals to me. So I did this piece for fun, and uh, now here I am sharing it with you is uh, my latest video series. So as you see, been watching here, I've been uh, breaking down the face bit by bit, uh, and a lot of people tend to ask what type of tools do I use. So uh, in this this video here, the pencil I've been using is a uh, Kuratoga mechanical pencil by Uni, and uh, I'm using a 0 .3 lead. It's very, it's probably one of the thinnest leads you can get, but it really helps allow for those little tiny tight details. So I really do enjoy using this uh, uh, newer. Um, mechanical pencil. Uh, you like to use an HB lead because I feel it gives me just the right softness uh, but without being so soft that uh, the lead, the ink just sits on top of the lead and gets all smeary. So I don't like to use a really soft lead as I've mentioned before. HB is halfway between that, that's that midpoint between the really hard lead and the really soft lead. So that, I, I like that middle ground of an HB there. And a lot of people ask what type of uh, artboard I'm using. I get that question very frequently, so uh, I will mention it here uh, that I'm using the uh, Canson Recycled Bristol Board. Um, you can get that pretty much at any art supply store, Michael's uh, Craft Stores, Aaron Brothers Framing Stores, um, or I'm sure any online uh, uh, art supply store as well. So Canson Recycled Bristol Board, is, I use the 9x12 uh, piece of board here. Um, also, I like the Strathmore Bristol board. That's also very good as well uh, for, for my needs. So those are the two brands I like to use. And uh, yeah, so um, now I'm moving into the inks here. Uh, as I've done in previous videos, I like to use the Pigma Micron uh, multiliner type uh, markers. And I'm going starting off here with a the 08 uh, for my initial contours here of, of her, uh, her face and then her neck, her shoulders, and like the ear here uh, and also using it for the inner details to a degree. Uh, I've gotten to a point where I can um, apply the right kind of pressure to get the kind of a thicker thin, mostly I can uh, capture a nice thin line by uh, pulling up from from the board as I uh, move across the, the page there to get the desired uh, shape that I'm looking for like there in the inner ear here on the cheeks. Uh, I'll probably um, yeah, it looks like I'm using it here on the eyelashes because I like to give a nice thick eyelash, especially on the female characters. Uh, it, it really helps. I think it makes for a nice setting of the eye there onto the head. You know, I don't want it too thin. I like a, a nice dark line for a nice weight of uh, of their eyes and really draws the viewer's eye to her eyes, where I think a lot of personality and emotion can be conveyed in, in the eyes. I really like to beef up the lines and uh, create the, the thickness I need uh, depending on uh, what part of the face I'm working on. Um, so uh, it's it's really keeping in mind um, what lines have I put down and what ne lines need to uh, be thickened uh, to kind of bring the whole, the whole piece together. Uh, I don't like for any one section to be too, have a line that's too thin or too thick. So I try to keep the whole entire entirety of her of her face, her her neck, her shoulders, her her um, her blouse, as uh, keep all those different uh, elements in mind um, in in their line weights, so that they all uh, come together in a unified sort of look. And I've switched to the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. I'm going to use that for a bit here for the hair. I love how it can uh, create the flow and and to the hair. And it takes a while to learn how to, to control a brush pen and get those uh, shapes. Um, that a brush uh, can accomplish over a, a marker tip. Um, 
if necessary. I encourage you, if you have one and you're not feeling comfortable with it, just get a spare piece of board or a piece of scratch paper and then just practice with it. Just practice making these types of uh, shapes and lines. And, and it's really just training your hand in uh, how to... Uh, how to move across, move the uh, the brush across the board. It's it's uh, not not always fun to do just to create the same lines over and over again, but uh, that training will 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 help you when you move into uh, drawing your piece and less likely to jack it up. So uh, do do practice uh, with a tool you're not feeling uh, comfortable with. It's it will pay off in the long run, and um, and you'll le learn something. I know I learned things just by by fiddling with the tool and. Uh, um, just trying different textures and techniques just outside of uh, an actual illustration. Um, you just never know what you're going to discover. And I'm using it here for her top, kind of that over-the-shoulder kind of 80s sort of look. Uh, using the brush pen I can create, uh, just in one stroke, create the kind of shadow that I'd want or need um, so that uh, it looks it looks the way I want without having to sit there and, and overthink the, uh, the shadows of, of her um, of her top. Uh, now using a smaller Pigma Micron uh, for the smaller details of her face, especially like the, the uh, iris and, and pupils of the eyes. I uh, want to keep keep that uh, nice and crisp and, and tight. A little bit there on the nose, rework the, the lips there a little bit. Like I said before, uh, make sure all the th thicks and thins are cohesive for the entirety of the, the portrait here. And I think I uh, move up to a, a zero, back up to the zero eight for the the pupil, uh, since I need a nice uh, sized black dot there. It's easier to do with a thicker um, marker tip. So this is, uh, let's see. Oh yeah, I'm going to add a little bit more of her mullet to the other side of her of her face there to kind of uh, balance it out a little bit. Back with a Pentel pocket brush pen and creating those uh, wispy lines uh, in a few few fun strokes. And now, uh, lastly, as a lot of people tend to ask um, about erasing, I always skip that part, so I've now included it here. Um, as you see, I have not filled in the black part of her costume there on her neck and shoulders. I'm going to do that in the color stage, uh, and plus it saves from erasing. It doesn't thin out that uh, black line art so much. Now, I didn't have a scan of the final black and white art, so I'm using a screen grab here. Uh, coming up next, part two, real soon, will be the full uh, Copic color uh, video and that will ha be more of a kind of a blended sort of look so it'll be a bit different than the uh, approaches I've done in my previous uh, Copic color video so stay tuned for that and I'll see you guys real soon thanks a lot bye bye